Here I am. Send me. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. A big vision. Hearty greetings to, to you as our leader. Greetings to my fellow colleagues, the clergy of the diocese, and greeting to the whole congregation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I greet especially these sisters and brothers in Christ who are going to be ordained today. I greet you, my brothers and sisters. Bishop, before I continue, may I thank you for transferring your authority of being a bishop <laughs> to me and to stand in your place, in your character. I'm, I'm deeply honored, but I'm a dollar type. Thank you, Bishop, and I, don't, I thank God in you. <coughs> and today, Bishop, my wife and I are celebrating 30 years, 30, 33 years of marriage. <laughs> exactly on this day, on the 29th, 1991, we took a oath and thank God for that. Thank you, my, my dear wife. I love you. <laughs> dear friends, today we are gathered to bear witness to a sacred moment in the lives of these faithful servants of God as they are called to the holy ministry of teaching. And my brothers and sisters, by the end of this service, you will not be referred to as teaching ordinance, but you will be referred as teaching. Your ordination comes a couple of weeks after the historic general elections in our country. The swearing in of members of parliament and MECs in some provinces and delegate negotiations to form a government of national unity. What a time to be ordained into this ministry of taking And we pray for a speedy God-ordained formation of the covenant, which will bring stability in our country. As we reflect on today's scriptures from Isaiah, Psalms, Romans, and Mark, let us be reminded of the profound calling and responsibility that is being placed on this ordinance. A call to save. If you can just catch that one, a call to say, then go along with it. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 8, we are 
presented with the powerful image of Isaiah's vision of the Lord seated on the throne, surrounded by seraphim. In this awe-inspiring moment, the prophet Isaiah is overwhelmed by the glory and holiness, holiness of God. When he heard, he hears, hears the voice of the Lord calling, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Isaiah responded with humbly obedience, saying, Here I am, send me. In this attitude of servanthood, that you should always have in your ministry. You must also have this humility and obedience in listening to God's call. Similarly, in Psalm 119, verses 35, 38, 38, the psalmist prays for understanding and obedience to God's commandments. He acknowledges his own weaknesses and shortcomings, but expresses a deep desire to walk in the ways of the Lord. This prayer serves as a reminder to us all that it is only through the grace of God and that we can fulfill our calling as servants of the Lord. In the second reading, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Paul urges us to present ourselves as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. He calls us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may discern the will of God, not our will, but the will of God. As deacons, you are called to embody this sacrificial love and to be agents of transformation in the broken world, in the broken communities around you. Finally, in Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45, we hear about the story of Jesus teaching the indigent disciples that the ultimate secret to greatness is to be the least of all a slave you my brothers and sisters are called to emulate the example of jesus who came not to be saved but to save and gave his life as a ransom for men his first calling was to serve God and gave his life to God. But for a daughter to do and go sing. As you prepare to take on this sacred role in the church. You may be inspired by the examples set before you in Scripture. Like Isaiah, may you respond to God's call with humility and obedience, saying, Here I am, send me. Like the Simons, 
May you seek to walk in the ways of the Lord with understanding and obedience. Like Paul, may you be wired to always say, always say, rather than be said. And lastly, like Jesus Christ, may you always, whether good nadi, no abunzima, always have sacrificial love for God's people. Jesus gave up all his rights and responsibilities and privilege and allowed Pontius Pilate to crucify him. That brutal death was enough to ensure that Jesus' message of hope and everlasting love will spread across Judea, across the Roman Empire, and across the world. My brothers and sisters, Tracy, Nukumelero, Kyoengosi, and Tlaganipo, the bishop will ordain you as deacons. Once he ordained you, you will become God's messengers and, and God's ambassadors. You will not be employees in the dust of the town. You will be slaves. Identify yourself with the, with the sect. Crucify Jesus in order for you to give up your lives to serve God and serve others around you by spreading Jesus' message of hope and everlasting life. Your response, here I am, send me, as we have done consciously in your mind. As you are seated there, that response will be followed by the acts of prostration. After that, you will be ordained as deacons. You will move from the pews and you will prostrate in prayer and humility. Immediately after that, you will be raised like Jesus Christ as he was raised to the cross. But you will be raised to come to, the, to kneel before the bishop again in the humility and obedience. After that, you will be invested. Immediately after that, you will be taken to occupy your spaces in the Holy of Holies. So my brothers and sisters, I implore you to serve with humility, reverence, dignity, and integrity in your role and responsibilities of liturgy, word, and service. You know what? Just enjoy. Enjoy to be deacons in the church of God. And remember, the greatness is to be a slave, a servant. Perfect, not that great. Don't ever look at the priesthood yet. Enjoy being naked. Don't even aspire to dress like that holy man. <laughs> Enjoy the service of being naked in the church of God.
In other cases, you will be asked to assist the bishop in the Holy of Holies. And you will be assisting the, the incumbents whom you are placed in under. Assist them with dignity, with humility, and with integrity. Don't fight with them. Yes, maybe you are more, because you see yourself as more qualified because of recent studies that you have done. Respect them. Allow them to, to show you the way of being a giving. Ninga, Nina, this Bonani, God, Bese, who says, we are big in the land. I said, enjoy to be big. And I remember I enjoyed my period at the digging. And sometimes it was very difficult when I was Christian. It was a different atmosphere altogether. So I'm afraid to enjoy and serve God with humility. And I know that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. And some of the great people in this world has ever seen that little more than that with a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love, they found a way to serve others and devoted themselves and their lives to save, to serve God and serve others. Take the example of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who said, the poorest of the poor in India, truly living as a servant of all, and many people wanted to live as she lived. So she began teaching a simple path. I would suggest that you follow that simple path. And here is Mother's Teresa's simple path from her book entitled A Simple Path. Let me share with you. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. And you, my brothers, and we, all of us can follow the example of Jesus. We can become great by serving others. But don't, let us not go for the positions. But let's become great as slaves and serve God and serve others. By looking for the opportunities to give to others what Jesus first gave to us. The Son of Man came to be saved, not to be saved, but to save. And he invites us all to do the same. May God bless you. May God equip you for the ministry to which he called you to be deacons in the church and to which we have all ascended. And may you always remember that you are not alone. For the Lord who has called you
goes before you and will be with you always. And we are here available as your clergy uh, brothers to assist you in this part. Don't fight us. Don't, 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 don't want my place in the mountain. That time will come. Just say with humility and obedience, assisting the people of God in their circumstances. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen.